Hello, hello, hello. How's it going? Hello, hello, hello. Hey, Rooney, Fuxi, Aziel, and Mel, fight my cousin. <laughs> you were before Atsuki, yes, but Rooney took it. Rooney snagged it. Ah, Atsuki has a... Um, my, my late grandfather, he said something that's so funny, and I, I, I remembered it. He said, uh, are you wearing a concrete uh, hat? We can understand how a concrete hat is uh, helping with your headache, as, as in AKA hungover. It was really funny, like a concrete hat. So that's a good, good analogy. Hey, Steven, Black Sable, Rolo Mancer. Hey, Bobby Shimizu, how's it going? Good old cake and coffee. Hey, Ritash, Ritas, how's it going? How about some topics? Give me some topics, please. Can I have some topics, please? Concrete hat is a topic. Why not? Rollo answer. Round one. <laughs> Dangerous Pixie, Chain Link Troll, Concrete Hat. Uh, Geisha Sword Maiden, Earth Mother. Pretty cool. So we got Concrete Hat, Dangerous Pixie, Chain Link Troll. I don't know if Bayornator is a topic. I'm not sure. Geisha Sword Maiden. Earth Mother, Queer Elf, Egg Blaster. If Bionator is a topic, then we have eight. I have no idea what Bionator is. I don't know if it's a suggestion, but let's see. Let's roll that da -da 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 dice. Five. Which is Concrete Hat. Uh, is number one dangerous pixie chain link troll geisha sword maiden earth mother rollomancer with earth and mother oh it was a topic right so the, then it's concrete hat uh dangerous pixie chain link troll bjornator geisha sword maiden so it's a geisha sword maiden So Rollo Master, you got your topic stolen from from right under your underneath your feet. Geisha sword maiden. That's ridiculous. Topic thief right there. Okay, I'm gonna use um, sketching technique of that kind of hard pencil, but with normal brush. Uh, so I'm gonna try to be light and textural and painterly uh, using um much like I used the uh, the you know with a uh, that kind of banksy technique <laughs> um, I'm gonna um, uh, try this method it's gonna be very similar in in the mental approach um
I'm a bit unsure about the posing. I had this idea I've been chasing, and when I'm when I see it now, I've I've kind of not uh, hit the mark in terms of matching my mind. Um, so it's something we gotta. I have to address because I'm not really happy with what I'm seeing. We'll figure it out. <laughs> I shouldn't be allowed. It was uh, it was my mistake not clarifying if Rita's topic was a topic or just random chatter. And it wasn't random chatter, it was a topic suggestion, so I had to include it, otherwise Rita's would have been cheated. So, what can I do? I'm trying to imagine what the geisha's haircut looks like. And I know that they kind of like obviously set a lot of pride in in their appearance. And I know they have like a makeup face. But what's their haircut? It's like a geometric shape. I can't actually, in my mind, see. They kind of have a thing in the back, right? Like a decoration. It's like a sumo haircut of, of sorts, right? Specter, yeah. That's true. I think uh, Padme was heavily inspired by <laughs> Geisha. I, I guess that's the 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 narrative there they wanted to bridge that she's a, a concubine. Do they, I think when they, they are working, they let their hair down, right? When they take it to the bedroom. But basically a geisha is, is just, is not a prostitute, right? As far as I understand, a geisha isn't uh, giving her body away, but she's actually uh entertainment right like the the whole tea ceremony and uh, high-end high-end uh, well escort actually without the the sex but the true meaning of an escort I guess Steven geishas can be male is that something modern or something that used to be in the traditional sense, old days? Oh, really, Stephen? I didn't know. I thought it was uh, exclusively a uh, female. female thing trained in the art of dancing music and conversation Bob Shimizu yeah exactly I mean there, I remember there was a movie 
a um, couple of years ago, maybe five, five, ten years ago, something called uh, like geisha or something about a blue, blue eyed geisha that was orphaned and raised uh, as an escort. Something like that, and obviously it was probably some. She got caught the eye of some high roller. Memoir of a geisha. Yeah, there we go, Bob Shimizu. Um, I think that's that's the movie. Um, I saw it only once, uh, so I have very vague memory of it. But uh, as I remember, it was quite a beautiful movie, well shot. Um, I don't know. I remember if it was in English or if it was in in Japanese. I'm unsure actually. I don't remember. Probably not English. Subtitle? Bob Shimizu, they spoke English? Oh. Yeah, that's one thing that I have to say, though, being multilingual. Um, I have a hard time really remembering which language is being used, especially uh, ever since uh, my internal dialogue language. Um, you know, when I'm crazy and talking to myself, uh, when it has switched language. For a majority of my life, or half of my life at least, um, my internal language was Swedish, right? Like if I had to count or if I had to recall something, uh, that internal monologue language would be Swedish. Uh, but now it swapped um, my internal monologue language of choice is English actually, and occasionally Latvian. Uh, which is confusing at times. So when I when I recall discussions, I'm not sure that they are they are actually recalled in the language they're spoken. Bob Shimizu, I speak Swedish, English, Latvian. German, some Finnish, I understand Norwegian, obviously, for free. I understand some Dutch, obviously, because of German. Uh, yeah. Hey, Square Tip, how's it going? Spectre. <laughs> Rooney, that's interesting. And I think in in, uh, in terms of Star Wars and Ray, I think Ray. Uh, I mean, this is obviously a very Star Wars pose, but it's also a very sword pose. So, I think one leads to the other. Hey, Square Tip. No, this is not for the tournament. Uh, currently, the judges are... Uh, 
putting down their votes for uh, the semi-final and uh, my warm-ups of I'm obviously uh, not partaking in the Unreal Bjornament as I'm the organizer um, this is a random uh, topic prompt by um, Atsuki I don't remember who, who won it but it, the prompt is a uh, geisha sword maiden um, and I'm kind of just going uh, geisha with a sword at the moment uh, and I'm struggling uh, because I couldn't find my in mental picture of where I wanted to take it so it's a little bit of um, a mess and I'm altering the direction so that's not really helping either uh, as in I'm I'm taking one step then one step forward and then two to the side rather than three forward uh, so the image is, is taking odd turns but uh, I'm going for it I don't care um, <laughs> Bistonian yeah I, I, I can I can see the point of you know like you only compare to the very best of the work an artist produce and they probably only put up the very best that they can produce but it's a good also like um, if you really push a painting to the utmost of your capability it's a good what's it called Littman's test uh, Littman test is like testing the water or proving the waters Litmus test A decisively indicative test right uh, if you push a painting to the very most of your capabilities and you compare it to the very best of someone else then you should be able to see where there's a gap not so much in uh, how are how good are you compared to that artist but what are you missing I think is the best uh, best comparative to do right because you shouldn't um, what's that apples with oranges compare apples with oranges especially when it's coming down to an artist because it's very personal and very different in between people but the technical abilities you can always compare right and I think that's important to do, but you should look at your own art when you, if you can't reach that artist, right? Or the drummer in your instance. I think it's, it's, I think it's healthy to see someone further down the road. And how can you like try to reverse engineer how you can get there? Not by, by uh, re retracing the steps, but understanding which steps need to be taken and then start your own path. Like by, for example, the, in your terms of that drummer, or oh, the drummer is doing something special with the feet that I can't do. So instead of you trying to figure out what they're doing in terms of technique or how they got there, under, get to the point of understanding that oh, they're doing that thing with their feet. What's the principle, base principle of that idea? And you can just go to any book that says, "Oh, this is how you do it." And then you can look, go back to that more professional drummer and go, oh, okay, so taking the basics and changing it to this because the drummer is the, that drummer. And you should do the same for like your skill set. So in a way, you're right about comparing studies or unfinished work, compared, compare that to your unfinished work because it's also an indication of path to take. Test. Litmus test is a acidity test, yes, but you can also, in, in the, it's used as in terms of uh, testing the eff efficiency or efficacy. Black Sable.
process drawings are fantastic because you get a uh, window into which which steps they've taken. It was a really big trend uh, many years ago um, to show whenever you uh, posted a painting that was new, uh, you you deliberately saved uh, the steps of how you got there, more or less layer structure, you know, like this. And people, and you, you showed it to people alongside your update so that they can, you, they could see how the image got created. And it was really, really useful seeing, for example, like Craig Mullins post or, or uh, Feng Zhu or, you know, or these monsters, right? Seeing, oh, okay, that's how they do it. And then you got the whole YouTube thing. But the whole YouTube thing is no one watches it that, that uh, intently, right? And there's a lot of waste with all these YouTube frames. Uh, what was really good with people putting a step by step together with their painting uh, is that the artists themselves have actually decided which is a, a step worth making to showcase the process. And you get a lot more truncated and more straightforward information. You don't get all the nifty little actions and layer settings and things like that because they that's not included it's just the image but in terms of steps you can see progress so it's fascinating Rollomancer, yeah, that's really it's a really cool feature in, in Procreate that you can um, play back. It's very handy. So I think actually I want to try to promote that uh, culture again um, on on the Discord. So I think what I will do is next time I will post art uh, from my end, it will be with um, steps included on a, on a separate file so people can see the journey of the painting. I think a lot of people would learn from that and it's not really done nowadays, um, which I think is a bit sad because it's a really useful thing to, to show. Like say, well, yeah. I one of the things which I kind of thought about that because I helped. Um, was it Atsuki? No, Zialin. Zialin, I believe, on Discord on Zialin's uh, private sketchbook or sub sketchbook. Uh, I posted some really old studies where I always included the step by steps. It's really useful to see. Uh, Art of Jim, I have done a little bit of film. I've done a lot of um, uh, world building for a couple of kids movies, like CG movies, as in character development, visual development, um, world building for for clients like uh, that want to make movies, right? CG movies. Um, I've also done some concept art for um, movies, like scenes. You know, like for Assassin's Creed, I had a short stint on. Um, what are other movies? Um, but those I got because of contacts. Uh, as in, I wanted to kind of venture into movie part a bit. And I asked some contacts, like, do you have anything? And I got some. Uh, steps and uh, it's for me in my experience it's more of the same it's the same principle of more of 
towards uh, uh, pre-production type. You nail a mood. You nail a flavor more. And I've of course done a lot of CG movie uh, stuff uh, for Axis and so on. Uh, for Wizards of the Coast, Days Gone, um, Crackdown 3, a lot of game CG movies. Grias sketchbook is the end, right? Thanks. Um, so for movies, it's it's about being fast and nailing mood, mood and texture, and in like as close as you can get to in frame, in camera quality, on the shortest amount of time, and you, that means you can't be super tight, but you have to. You know, if, if let's say you want to have a mood, right? Uh, a setting sun, uh, you know, a cowboy movie. You can't sit and paint everything, but you have to be able to quantify what the mood is. As in, if you would, if you would have a recipe to cook the cake of a western sunset, what elements do you need to put into the cake, right, to make it make that sunset? Uh, Western sunset cake. Oh, it's sand. It is uh, Grand Canyon esque uh, environment. There's some some dirty dirty cowboys. Uh, specific temperature in the light, right? And a sense of tension, and um, and character. Lots of character, right? So so when you try to paint that at a very uh, quick uh, quick time you don't have time to sit and paint every grain of sand you don't have time to sit and paint all these things so you have to uh, you have to question like how mu how much detail and quality I'm forced to push into this versus how much can I communicate for free with suggestive information but because it's movies a lot of people in Traditionally, they don't want to extrapolate what can be, right? They want to see it. So that means you need to nail certain elements of, of this recipe spot on, but you can't be super tight. So it's about understanding, for example, how sunset works, what the temperature happens with shadows and light, uh, compositional, like maybe the sunset has already set over the horizon and uh, the cowboy only gets hit with a little bit light on the, on his hat and get a cool cast shadow across his face and that could indicate he's the bad guy, you know, or you, you decide that you're going to paint a scene with backlighting um, and, you know, what the, these kind of things set your mind, right? And you have to be able to be quick and precise. Because in movies they the short turnaround. I'm almost hundred K on my channel. Oh that's cool. I don't know what that means. I'm not a partner or anything, so it probably doesn't mean anything in terms of evolution for the channel, but it's a great milestone to reach. Thanks everyone for for uh, spending time on my channel. Hanging out with me every morning, five years running. <laughs> Black Sable. Uh, that would be cool. Five years, that's over a, over a thousand warm-ups. That is a lot of of paintings.
Spectre. Yeah, the problem with me not being partnered is that uh, you you require to have over a hundred viewers, or I think over seventy five viewers uh, over a period of time, certain amount of hours over a period of time for you to be able to uh, reach like numeric partnership level. And uh, I don't reach that because we are about 40 for half an hour and we, we never go above, I never go above a half an hour, uh, you know, obviously it's, it's a warm up stream and I've contacted Twitch saying, you know, like I can't, I don't stream that much, but it's a constant, it's every day at the same time over this period of time and so on and so on and so on. But they're like, nope, come back to us when you have a higher number higher amount of viewers uh, so uh, fight milk uh, well it's just numerics it's just statistics in numerics right so that if I stream for half an hour, I probably need to be 140 for half an hour rather than 75 for an hour. Rooney Tochka. Um, I started out differently. Um, I set out to have a, a lot more harder brushwork. Uh, intentionally, I wanted to be a lot more heavy. Um, but because of the topic and because of the decision I made in terms of image, I can't go as heavy handed as I would have liked to. Um, so it's a bit of a um, compromise of the technique I wanted to use, which is a more heavier, uh, I kind of add Adrian Smith style, heavy, light and dark difference. Um, so it is kind of like an ad adaptation of that technique versus my own sketching uh, style. Uh, but uh, yeah, the, because I've, I've went with a little bit more gentle values, it's, it's kind of working against me. And uh, I'm kind of you know, <laughs> trying to make the best out of it. But... It is what it is. Art of gym, yeah, exactly. So th my thirty-minute setup is kind of uh, working against me. It's not really prone to partnership uh, because a lot of people to get to partnership, you have to spend like hours, uh, you know, hours and on an hours on end to rack up uh, view time average over a certain over a certain degree of viewers. Uh, so I, I, I have given up, uh, I have given up hope expecting to be a partner b b because of that fact alone that I'm not, uh, I'm only streaming half an hour so. All right, this is what it ended up being. I would say it's an okay painting. I, uh, there's elements in there that I enjoy. Um, there's elements in here that I don't enjoy. Um, I kind of like the textural aspect of it. 
So I'm not too annoyed by the end result, but it's not what I had in mind. Uh, but it's something I can live with. <laughs> hey, Cypher, uh, I can only stream for half an hour because it is, um, I am an art director at the studio and I've uh, introduced a warm up period every morning. Uh, so that all the artists have to sit for half an hour and draw to be creative and get their mind going. Uh, and I just decided I'll stream it because after this stream I do client work all day. And it's a great way to experiment and get the rust out and uh, try techniques and things like that. Um, so after this I go and work. Uh, that's why I can't sit and stream longer. Official glacier. Well, yeah, I think that's one of the reasons why I do it as well is, is sharing and and not being alone. <laughs> I'm alone. Well, glad to read that black sable. I'm glad to have uh, affected you. Uh, Cypher, I do stream occasionally on weekends with music and art, but it's but not a lot because of uh, the situation with my kid. Let's find someone to raid before we leave to pass the love on to... How about we raid Let's Looks looking cool. Let's go back to Studio Colrophobia. He's doing some Warhammer stuff that looks pretty dope. Spectre, yeah, eight hours workday. Plus the extra projects I have at night. And so on. Right, so have a great day. Good night. Uh, thanks for the topic. Um, I will do the outro and then take you to the raid, so don't go anywhere. Uh, have a good night, great day. Toodles, see you tomorrow. Feedback Friday and all that. Ciao.